Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm setting up all of my initial bullet journal spreads for September. The theme I'm working with this month are doors in Portugal. And this was mostly inspired by not only the recent trip to Portugal, but also a specific postcard I brought back. Thank you to my patrons for helping me pick the theme this month. And we're starting this setup off with the quote page. It's actually been a few months since I've done a proper quote page and I was feeling in the lettering mood. So here we are. The quote this month is, every door is another passage, another boundary we have to go beyond. This is a roomy quote and I'm being a little bit of a poser here because I haven't read a roomy anything before, but I did find this quote rather beautiful and of course it fits the theme. I'm all about having things cohesive, so yeah. For the lettering itself, I'm using a combination of a sort of natural sans serif, a script, and a slap serif for the word passage. If you're curious, I'm using a font called Hugo Slab for the inspiration. Since there are a few different styles of lettering here, I wanted to make sure I didn't like overdo it on the color. So I'm just using a few different shades of blue for that. I'll have all my supplies linked below if you're wondering what I'm using. And back to the color thing really quick. We did see a lot of blue in Portugal, the towel work in particular, it was super gorgeous and mostly blue and white. So this choice of color was a little nod to that. Right under the quote, much smaller, I'm writing in September and moving on to the cover page. For this, I'm doodling in first of many doors for the theme. I'm using a Tombow Furunosuke pen for that, mostly because you can go back and color on top of this pen without some of that like bleeding and feathering you get with other black pens and fine liners. And I'm gonna be pretty loose, pretty chill with all the drawing in this setup. Everything will have like sort of a mature cartoon vibe. Yeah, I don't really know how to describe it, but I wasn't thinking too hard about it. Yes, I could have taken a lot of time and made sure every line was super straight and everything was really symmetrical, but A, I honestly did not have time for it. B, I'm over like pressuring myself for the internet, it's fine and C, it's just a fun, loose style, so why not? And really, while I was sort of planning this whole setup and how I was gonna like execute it, I was thinking watercolor, which would have been really fun. I haven't really dove into that for a little bit. And then I was thinking color pencils because I just got a great set of Caran d'Ache pencils for my birthday, really right up until filming. I had no idea what I was gonna use to make this happen. But honestly, I really enjoyed just using the markers for this one and the setup didn't take as long as I had anticipated. But yeah, for the yellowish golden door itself, I maybe used two different markers. The illusion of shadows and dimension and all of that just comes from going over the same spots more than once. So just a little tip, if you don't have that many markers, you can create different shades by doing that. Okay, wow. On to the monthly spread. I am back to my Monday start vertical calendar. Sorry, Sunday start people. I've been loving this vertical calendar situation and I don't know, it just like feels fresh and I just like that I still have plenty of space to write in events, but like it doesn't take up the entire spread. So right now, and probably for the near future at least, I think I'm on this vertical calendar train. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this or if you're curious. Uh, yeah, I just wanna know what your monthly calendar situation is. And see, this is another reason why I liked having the monthly calendar just being on one page. I can dedicate more room to some doodles. So here, just for the aesthetics of it all, I'm drawing in two more doors. Again, keeping it wobbly and pressure-free with the outline. 
It was so much fun looking to the postcard for inspiration. I'll show you the postcard a little later, but yeah, look into that for inspiration, but also making my own design decisions about colors and the different elements each door has, and even like what number is going to be on the door plate. So for these, I did six and 24 because it's my birthday and literally no one would probably realize that, but it was a fun little thing to sneak in there for my own kind of satisfaction. So yeah, same story here using two different reds, not being too concerned about where a shadow is supposed to be, but rather using the shadows to just give it some interest. Ooh, and this was a neat little hack. So I wanted the two windows on the door to look super intricate, like towel work or stained glass or something. And I obviously wasn't going in with that sort of intense detail, so instead I used the power of repetition and just did a bunch of circles to just fill the space. And I'm actually really loving how detailed it looks. But under that, I've been adding in my habit trackers. So a little change up for me to have them on the monthly spread, but I think it'll be good since I do spend time with both of these sections anyway, every month, the numbers on the side are just the dates for every Sunday, just because I've tried not to have the numbers for these mini trackers before. And I get confused y'all. Okay, this is typically where my night log goes, and I guess this is sort of my night log, but it's different and we'll get to it. But for now, I'm using my washi tape to section off the side panel of the spread where some decorative door-like patterns are gonna go. This is strictly decorative, but yeah, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna give you a rundown on this new night log layout situation. Basically, I'm still writing down movies we're watching, I'm going to have a section for a TV series we're watching too, but like I was getting tired of remembering which season, which episode, having to write the same series day after day if we were just watching it straight through. So there's a section to write down just the series name. Maybe I'll put the season in there too. I'll figure it out. And then down below that, I'm gonna take that other piece of my night log where I would track our meals and just have an area for meals that are hits that we both really like because I like to try new recipes from time to time. But with that also comes some misses. So I'll keep up with those as well. So I know not to make it again or adjust the recipe or just take it off my Pinterest board, whatever. I feel like I did not do such a great job explaining that, but hopefully once you see it, it'll make a little more sense. But yeah, you saw that I pulled out some gouache earlier, shocker, but that ended up just being the best move to do that white on top of that dark olive Tombow. So yeah, here we go. The top area is for movies under that TV series. And then you have the mill hits and mill misses down below. And here's the postcard that inspired the setup this month. I was going to put the actual postcard here, but I thought I could cut down on bulk and make it fit the larger page a bit better by scanning it in, printing it out on sticker paper and plopping it right in. Flipping over, my project dashboard is getting a little bit of a facelift this month. And honestly, I don't know if it'll be sticking around in my journal because I recently started working on a similar master work project list for Notion. And that may end up making more sense because, you know, working with graphic design, we're working with a lot of digital files and things constantly changing. And I'm working with another person as well. So it just may be a better move. But here we are for possibly the last hoorah. 
And for that, I'm simplifying things into two columns, one for the project name and then the other one for a status update, like where the project is, if we're waiting on something, if we need to do something, but that area will be reusable since that is guaranteed to change throughout the month. If you haven't seen these reusable sections before, I'll link that video above in the cards and also in the description for you. You can see I pretty much have that correctable pin in my pin loop at all times these days. You'll also see that there are way more spaces for projects because it's been absolutely insane lately with work. We're very thankful, very grateful grateful, but also just taking it day by day. The next page is just for some monthly task boxes broken down by category. The top will look familiar for monthly invoices and upcoming projects, but under that are some new boxes. I typically track stuff for Etsy and Patreon, home projects and personal things inside of my weekly spreads, but I've been feeling that I'm just migrating things over and over. Things get lost in the work shuffle, so I'm going to try to utilize this one dedicated area for the entire month. All right, the last spread for this setup is the weekly spread. And from time to time, based on what I have going on, I like to throw in a super sized weekly spread. And these are one of those times because I'm actually not gonna be on my normal sort of routine for most of September. I'm actually going to San Francisco with my dance instructor and friend and we're seeing Lady Gaga. Super excited about it. Never been to San Francisco or California for that matter. So excited about that. I will be taking my bullet journal for this trip, but all of that to say that this weekly spread has 11 days in it and not to disrupt my usual weekly spread layout, I added in a little flip up for the events using an Archer and Olive dot grid notepad for that. So under the little illustration of the door close up, you'll see two beginnings of boxes and these are for the weekend. Usually I have a whole different order of business on the weekends. And so I found myself making separate to-do lists for Saturday and Sunday on post-it notes or just under my usual task list. So I thought I would plan ahead and have dedicated space for the weekend. In the flip up there, I have another little blue box and I wish I could tell you that I had some brilliant plan for that blue box, but... In reality, I totally goofed up my day counting and just ended up with this box in the middle. So we'll see how that ends up coming in handy. Could be a fun doodle space. Maybe I'll fill it with a quote or a fun memory from San Francisco. I'll just continue to workshop that one. Over on the other side is my rolling task list, almost business as usual for this page. I was feeling a little experimental this month if you haven't gathered from all the changes, but the only notable difference with this one is having a priority section up top. So I've marked those with yellow and separated them out with a line. So to do's that are more pressing or more time sensitive will go up top. So yeah, once that's in there, that'll do it for my 11 day weekly spread. Before we take another look at all of the spreads for this month, I wanted to show you the sticker set I made to go along with the theme. This is the decorative sheet. This is the functional sheet with note taking stickers, event callouts, and header stickers, and a cute little holographic die cut sticker, which I had a hard time getting in focus, obviously. <laughs> these will be available in my Etsy shop on September 1st, but patrons get these earlier with printables and exclusive videos every month. The links to both will be in the description if you want to check it out and support the channel. All right, another plan with me in the books. Let's flip through these spreads. Don't forget to let me know about your monthly calendar situation in the comments, along with anything else you want to know or chat about. This may be another month of silence from me because of the trip and I'm going to be on the road a lot for work, but I promise I will be back as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.
And if you like this video, here are a couple more I think you would enjoy.